Yeah. So, um, uh, on a separate, with, with the change in sound that Satyricon's made over the ages, it, it reminds me of another one of my favorite bands I listened to, which was Entombed, which really adopted this death and roll sound. Um, you know, we're talking about the philosophy of black metal, but do you guys consider yourself a black metal anymore? Are you just a metal band? Uh, well, Tim, uh, no, I consider myself as a member of a black metal band and, and a, a songwriter in the black metal genre. And this comes back to what I was saying earlier is that, you know, the music style changes. What I, but however, when it comes to, you know, the rock influences, uh, the, what I was thinking back then, which, um, I, uh, I started analyzing Bathory, Venom, Celtic Frost, these bands from the 80s and thinking to myself that actually the stuff that I like the most is more, um, is more straightforward. And I felt that we, we had done a lot of things that were uh, avant-garde and progressive. And I thought to myself that... Um, um, I wanted to try and make, you know, more muscular riffs that, uh, had their feet more firmly planted on the ground. And I felt that that's what I was hearing with, if I was listening to, you know, uh, Circle of the Tyrants by Celtic Frost or, you know, Seven Gates of Hell by Venom or, uh, uh, you know, uh, various, uh, Bathory songs, Necromancy or whatever, and uh, or Race the Dead, and I've, I, I felt that that what we were trying to do by incorporating those type of riffs and that style of songwriting is that we weren't really bringing rock and roll into black metal. I felt that we were bringing more um, old black metal type of thinking into current day black metal uh, and that was my approach but I think what happens a lot of the time is people aren't interested enough in music to to reflect upon these things so it's hard for them to see see the connections I think it's interesting you know with, uh, when when I hear something is to try and understand where does that come from you know, and, and how, how this, how, how does this link up with something else? Uh, and if you are interested in these things, uh, you know, you start realizing a lot of, um, uh, connections, uh, within the world of music that I as a music find, find to be deeply fascinating. And, you know, you guys have shown yourself to be adaptive to change through your discography. Um, but have you ever found, do you, do you ever feel the pressure of expectation of being satiricon and, and being sort of trapped in a, a particular sound or, or expectation of sound? Mm, not really. I mean, um, um, I'm not sure I feel that I can do, you know, like a electronica record, uh, but, but uh, I'm not sure. That Why not? I, Morbid Angel yeah. did it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, but I, I'm not sure that I want to do one either. Uh, so, but, um, uh, I mean, most of the time I'm fine doing what I'm doing. I remember, um, I remember, um, when I was, I was genuinely surprised when I started promoting the previous Satyricon record and, uh, and then, uh, it was presented to me by many journalists as, as the inclusion of singer Sievert Hayem on our single Phoenix was was a, a controversial and and perhaps even brave move. And I, I like I was saying to our live bass player, I said, why is that controversial and why is that brave? First of all, this is a guy that he doesn't exactly sound like you know like a happy guy. Uh, he he spent his whole life playing dark music in one way or another. Secondly, uh, uh, he, uh, what he's doing with us is, 
it's not happy stuff either. And he's a, it wouldn't be the like, you know, it wouldn't be the first time in history where someone um, is is singing on the metal songs with a clean voice either. So, so I uh, that yeah, like my live bass player suggested this. Sometimes I perhaps underestimate how conservative uh, you know the metal scene can be, but whenever. Uh, whenever I do reflect upon that and 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 see it, I still I still do what I would like to do because um, because I should be the one in charge of how Satyricon sounds, not not someone outside the band. That's the way I think. So yeah.